Hi everybody, Dr. Mike here. Now let's look at the anatomy of swallowing. So we're gonna look at some of the muscles, we're gonna look at some of the nerves, we're gonna look at some of the activities of these muscles and nerves in order for us to get a nice delicious cheeseburger into our esophagus. So in order to get that cheeseburger down there, what you need to do is open your jaw, put it into your mouth, close your jaw, and do this on repeat. Open and closing of the jaw requires certain muscles. Now in actual fact, there's three muscles that allow for us to close the jaw, one muscle that allows for us to open the jaw. Now the three muscles that allow for us to close the jaw include the masseter. So if you to tense your jaw right now, you could feel the masseter right here. Then another muscle is the temporalis. Close the jaw again and then put your fingers on your temples. You're now feeling the temporalis muscle. And the last one is that of the medial pterygoid, which is deep, deeper to the masseter, okay? So these three muscles allow for closure of the jaw. Now, in order for us to open the jaw, we only need one muscle, and that's the lateral pterygoid. And what the lateral pterygoid does is takes the epicondyle of, that, of the mandible and basically loosens it out of that joint, all right? So these four muscles are involved with chewing. Now, what nerve innervates these muscles? Well, it's the trigeminal nerve. And the trigeminal nerve is cranial nerve five. So it's gonna be coming out of the brain stem to innervate these nerves, and it's cranial nerve five. Now, trigeminal nerve is both a sensory and a motor nerve. In this case, this is its motor nerve function, but its sensory nerve function is that of sensation of the face. So if you take your three fingers like this, these are the three branches of the trigeminal nerve. You're gonna have the, optic, uh, the ophthalmic, the maxillary and the mandibular, okay? So sensation from these particular areas via the trigeminal nerve. All right, but we know that in order to break food up, it's not just opening and closing of the jaw, we need to manipulate that food in our mouth via our tongue. But first, to keep the food in the mouth so it doesn't fall out, we need to close those lips and we need to tense the muscles of the cheek, okay? So the buccinator muscles, which are the muscles of the cheek, and the orbicularis oris, which are the muscles of the lips, both need to close off. Now they do this because of the facial nerve. So facial nerve, facial nerve is gonna be this motor nerve, which, and facial nerve is cranial nerve seven. And that's going to tighten those lips, orbicularis oris, and the cheeks need to be tightened as well, the buccinator muscles, and that is via cranial nerve seven. All right, now movement of the tongue. The tongue needs to move the food around the mouth to deliver it to the teeth so that the teeth can obviously chew it up. In order for the tongue to move, there's multiple muscles associated with it. Talk about those in a second. But the nerve that innervates these muscles predominantly is gonna be the nerve called the hypoglossal nerve. And this is cranial nerve 12. So cranial nerve 12, term the hypoglossal nerve, I'll write it up here. Again, is a cranial nerve that's coming out of the brainstem telling the tongue to move, all right? Now, if we wanna talk about taste of the tongue, well, taste comes from the facial nerve, which is the anterior two thirds, the front two thirds of the tongue for taste is via the facial nerve. The posterior one third of the tongue is via another nerve called the glossopharyngeal nerve. And I'll talk about that one in a second. So now what we've got is we've had a bit of food into the mouth, the lips are tight, the cheeks are tight. The jaw's moving up and down and the tongue is manipulating that food. So far we've, done, we've spoken about cranial nerves five, seven and 12 doing these functions for us. Now what happens is we need to moisten that food. So in order to moisten the food, we need to tell the salivary glands to release saliva. Now you're gonna have the parotid salivary glands, pa meaning near, otid meaning ear, so they're near the ear salivary glands. You're gonna have the sublingual under the tongue, submandibular, all right? So these three salivary glands release saliva. Now the parotid salivary glands, they're stimulated to release saliva via the glossopharyngeal nerve, which I haven't spoken about yet. So the glossopharyngeal nerve is cranial nerve nine. Let's write it over here. Glossopharyngeal nerve, which is cranial nerve nine. That's going to tell the parotid salivary gland to start salivating. The sublingual and submandibular salivary glands, again via facial nerve, cranial nerve seven. Now what we've got is a moistened bit of food that's broken up that we term a bolus, B-O-L-U-S. And now this bolus, which is being manipulated around the mouth by the tongue, what happens is the tongue will contract. And as the tongue contracts, it lifts up and back. Now the muscles that help this process are what we term the suprahyoid muscles. Now if you were to take me in this position, 
you'll see here's my jaw like that. There's the jaw there. And you're gonna have the Adam's apple, which is the laryngeal prominence, which is laryngeal cartilage. And then the windpipe, which is these parts here. And then the hyoid bone, which is this floating bone that sits up here, which you can't see. But there's the hyoid bone from a lateral view. There's the hyoid bone from an anterior view. And you can see there's multiple muscles attached into the hyoid bone and up towards the tongue. Now, these suprahyoid muscles, when they contract, they're gonna lift, as you can see, they'll lift the hyoid, which is attached to the larynx and trachea, and lift the larynx and trachea up. So that means as the tongue elevates, it's going to lift the hyoid and lift the trachea up as well. Now, if it lifts it up, it's gonna lift it up like this, which means the whole airway here moves up, and this lid, called the epiglottis, closes over. That means that food, when we go to swallow, will not go into our airways, hopefully. Now, another thing is, as this tongue elevates, it's gonna push this food bolus against the roof of the mouth. Now, the roof of the mouth has the soft palate and the hard palate. The hard palate has bone, soft palate does not. Now, there's nerves in this soft palate, so when the food bolus hits this nerve, this nerve is actually going to be the glossopharyngeal nerve, cranial nerve nine, when it hits that nerve, it sends a signal to the brainstem, particularly the medulla, which is our swallowing center, and sends a signal back out. Now the signal that's coming back out is cranial nerve 10, which is called the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve tells the muscles of the soft palate to contract and move up and back like that, closing off the nasal cavity. So now what we've done, through the use of the vagus nerve, through the use of contraction of the suprahyoid muscles, we've lifted the tongue up, closed off the larynx and the airways. We've lifted the soft palate up via the vagus nerve, closing off the nasopharynx. And so now we've turned what used to be a combined compartment of air and food to just a compartment of food. And so now that food bolus can move back due to pushing backwards of the tongue. That food bolus, bolus will hit against the oropharynx. Again, stimulate glossopharyngeal and vagal nerves. So right here, there's gonna be nine and 10, cranial nerve nine and 10. It's gonna send afferents to the brainstem, efferents back out. Predominantly, the efferents are gonna be that of cranial nerve 10, which is the vagus nerve, and allow for us to swallow. Now, as we move this airway up this way to close it off, it actually stretches open the esophagus and allows for that food bolus to move in. So as you can see, it's quite complex, a couple of cranial nerves involved and muscles involved. What are the cranial nerves involved with swallowing? Well, we've got the trigeminal nerve, we've got the facial nerve, we've got the hypoglossal nerve, we've got the glossopharyngeal nerve, and we've got the vagus nerve as well. So this is the anatomy of swallowing.